afternoon. As chair, I now call to order the March 18th, 2024 meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee, the Board of Education. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after, cons after cons consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Mr. Baysmore and Ms. Siebel if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Siebel, please call the role of board members to determine presence of a quorum of the committee. Good afternoon. Um, Ms. Booker Dwyer? Present. Ms. Lichter? Present. Ms. Drummond? And Ms. Pumphrey? Here. Thank you. Ms. Seabalt, please call the role of staff members and guests participating in today's meeting. Mr. Baysmore? Present. Ms. Charlie Green? Present. All right, thank you. Thank you. The first item on the agenda is legislative bill review, and for that I call on Mr. Baysmore. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to say that today is an important day down in the legislature. Um, known as crossover day, um, March the 18th, which means if, if bills have been filed on the House side, they must cross over today um, in order to get a uh, guaranteed a hearing before the session is over. Uh, same on the Senate side. If a senator has put a bill in, um, it must cross over, get a bill number on the House side today. If not, um, it's not impossible to get your bill heard, um, but it's very improbable. Um, so this is an a very important day uh, today. We'll be monitoring the bills to see which ones have crossed over and uh, uh, continue to monitor those. So I just wanted to, wanted to say that. Um, we have a few bills here that we've been monitoring. Um, just as a sample, uh, we've had over 300 bills this session that we've been monitoring. It's been really busy. Our um, board here um, has been very active, Madam Chair, you and, and um, Christina Pumphrey and uh, a few other board members have testified either verbal, verbally, verbally um, or, or written testimony. And we've had um, agencies weigh in on a multitude of bills too this, this session. So we've been really engaged um, in a lot of things that's been going on in Annapolis. So we've, we, we work really good as a team. And I just, I just want to thank everybody um, for the team effort. Um, our first bill, that we're that we're still monitoring is SB 1026 HB 1115 and that's a, a county boards of education budgets uh, it's known as the transparency and education spending act um, this bill is moving uh, on both sides uh, it passed third reading uh, with favorable amendments um, MAVE has supported this bill with amendments um, we'll continue to uh, monitor this bill, but it looks like it's um, typically if you pass both both houses uh, at, at this date, um, um, it, that that's that's a very good sign. Um, HB 108, SB 451 is the Baltimore County Board of Education. Uh, this is the compensation bill, the non-student. Uh, uh, compensation and the student member scholarship bill. This bill as well is on third reading. Uh, it's from the House and the Senate side. Um, it has been referred to committee and that's probably because it's, it's, it's not a red flag. It just means that the bills have to be identical uh, in, in, in the final analysis. And I think when they uh, put the amendment on to the bill, they refer to committee and they come up with identical language and it'll keep it'll, it'll keep moving. Um, so that that will continue to monitor that bill. It looks like it's it's, it's, it's going to be moving and make it to the finish line. Um, and I know um, our vice chair, um, Christina Pumphrey, was interested in this bill, so we wanted to just give an update on HB 386. 
Senate Bill 425, that's the Maryland Mills for Achievement in Classroom Breakfast Program. Um, that bill also is on third reading, um, moving on both sides, the House and the Senate side, and it was referred to committee as well. And um, again, that's probably to um, make sure that the languages are, are identical. We'll continue to monitor that one as well. Um, another local bill, we had a couple local bills this year um, just pertaining to um, you know, our board. This is, a, this is another one, it's SB 78 and HB 495. It's the Baltimore County School Board Nominating Commission Records and Meeting Requirement Bill. Um, again, this bill uh, is moving as well on both sides of the house. It is in third reading. Um, this bill was referred to committee as well. There was an amendment attached to it uh, that that they have to make sure that both versions are identical. Uh, don't see any red flags. That's more more technical um, adjustments. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that one as as well. Um, our, our, our teacher certification bill, uh, which we all we, we spoke about at the last at our last meeting, you know. Um, uh, is moving as well. This is HB 945, Senate Bill 771. Um, this bill is moving. Um, it is on third reading as well and was referred to committee. Uh, so we'll continue to monitor that. Uh, uh, the, make it easier and a lot, a lot more equitable for um, teacher certifications because there's a teacher shortage and we're trying to make, without lowering the standards, make things, you know, easier for those that are getting their certification. So that, that that bill is moving forward. And the last bill is HB 75, Senate Bill 377, which is the Teacher Development and Retention Program. Um, this bill also is passed on both sides and is in third reading, and we'll continue to monitor that one as well. So those are the sample bills. If anybody have any questions or comments they want to make. Uh, yes, Mr. Bazemore, let's pause here because I know board members, we have testified in support of the school board nominating commission and the adjustments uh, to the to the student scholarship bill. Um, are there any other bills you know, from this legislative committee that you feel like we need to um, provide some written testimony for or want to support? So Ms. Pumphrey or Ms. Lichter, um, do you see any other bills that rises to to the occasion that you feel like the board should support? I know that we have some our legislative priorities around, um, you know, class sizes and school schedules and out of school time learning. But when I think about like the teacher uh, certification or um, or higher teacher development and retention, I mean, these are all things we we know we'll need more teachers to reduce class sizes. So um, I wanted to pause here and see if Ms. Pumphrey or Ms. Lichter, um, are there any bills for these key school legislation that you feel like we should bring to the full board for consideration for a written testimony or, or anything like that? I'm good right now. I can't, um, unless there's something Mr. Bazemore thinks needs additional support behind it. Um, no, ma'am, I think we're doing uh, really good this legislative session and um, and we've worked very, very closely with Mabe and Pazam. And I think we've positioned ourselves really well um, for those bills that we were interested in and, and brought up. Those testimonies has really helped as well as our colleagues around the state because we coordinate with them as well. I think we're doing good. I think um, if there's a, a an alarm bell to be sounded. Um, Maybe and Pazan will let us know. Sometimes they they have what they call a call to action. If we see something going in the last three weeks that where we may need people to testify, write letters, and that sort of thing, we'll have a, a call to action. Um, yeah, that but happened I, last year with the um, Carroll County thing. With um, I can't remember. It was the local control over curriculum for that that one. There was a call to action. So. Yes, yes, and right, because one thing that they do, uh, 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 Jane, as you know, um, is they fight feverishly to to make sure that you can do your job as local boards. Um, you don't you don't want. You know, mandates and, and uh, especially unfunded mandates dictating that the actual job that's yours, 
And so, yeah, in Carroll County, um, I remember that bill would have taken away a lot of your authority to be, you know, to do your job as board members around curriculum. And, and we were successful too. That call to action was, was successful. Ms. Pumphrey, how about, what are your thoughts? I was just going to say, um, I also think that um, because of both you and my involvement on the MABE committee itself, um, we also would hear in those meetings, although I can say I missed the last meeting because of um, my, something had to do with my daughter, but I think you and I would hear also from MABE directly if there was a call to action in place or something that we needed to speak to immediately. Yes, definitely. And I know we discussed at the last MABE uh, legislative committee meeting the budget transparency bill, and I know MABE is recommending some amendments to it, and so, um, Mr. Bazemore, if you could just follow that for us uh, to see, because that would impact how we, um, it would impact certain things with our budget. Yes. At least for the next fiscal cycle. It wouldn't take effect for the budget we've already submitted. Correct. And, and, and with that one, Madam Chair, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, we, it was mandating, that bill was mandating that we, that we report um, uh, I think uh, to, to to our local government, any budget transfers or movement in money um, at one percent, um, Maven and Pazam went in and recommended fifteen percent, and I think we settled on ten, which is a lot better than one. And what it does is allow our system to have flexibility when we have to shift and move money without going to the county and, and saying, okay, we have to report to you, then you get back to us and lose windows of opportunity. And and everybody saw that as a, as a real reasonable and, um, you know, amendment to that bill. So that one we, we're definitely following because it does affect us. You know, if we don't have, we can't do certain things at certain times and we miss that window, as you know, then it can affect our whole, you know, budget process. Um, but everybody agrees on, on transparency. And one of the things in the hearings that I, that I found out, and, and it was good, that we do a, a lot of reporting. Um, it, it, there's no lack of reporting that goes on to the county and to the state and school boards around from around the state. Everybody weighed in that they they have, uh, on any given month, they're reporting something to someone. Um, so they don't wanna put an extra added burden on that when, when these things are already being done. So that, that bill has been tweaked, it's been amended, I think when it finally comes out, you know, we'll be, it'll be transparent, but it'll give us some flexibility. Okay, you can go to the next. Oh, okay. Bye. Yes, ma'am. And next on the agenda is the review of the May priority bills. And I believe everyone received, received those. Um, what I like, Madam Chair, do you want me to go through the May priority bills that we looked over or have the, the team look them over and, and if they had any questions? And so um, has everyone had a chance to look at May's priority bills and their position on it? I, there was um, there were none of the bills where they have a position. Um, so they either put, you know, support with amendments, oppose, no position or support or hold. And I didn't, there wasn't any that stood out as a flag to me, um, but I don't know if Ms. Lichter or Ms. Pumphrey, um, in looking at, they have a massive table of bills uh, where they identify, you know, their position. And, and are there any bills that stand out to you that we wouldn't be in alignment with made with? And, and Madam Chair. Yes. Mad Madam Chair. Yes. Um, if, if, if you want me to just go over each bill and give you where they are, second reading, third reading, I can do that. That'll be helpful, yes. Okay. And we've lined up pretty well with May. Sometimes we're not always lined up, but this year we've lined up, you know, with Pazam and Mabe on all of, all of these priority bills. So I'll start off with uh, uh, 
made. OK, here we go. SB 1026 HB 1115. Um, and that's the bill you were talking about, um, Madam. Madam Chair, we'll continue to monitor that transparency bill. It is on third reading, so it, it, is, it, is, it is moving. Um, HB 909, SB 803 is our local share of major education aid, non-recurring cost exclusion bill. Um, we actually oppose that bill. Um, it, it's, it's still on first reading, which typically if a bill at this point in the session is on first and second reading, it will be very difficult for that bill to get through the session. So Mabe opposed this bill. It doesn't look like it's moving forward. Um, our next bill is HB 760. This is the uh, the financial audits alterations. Um, we supported this bill uh, with amendments. Um, it passed on the House side, but it, it hasn't um, received a bill number on the Senate side yet. And that goes back to crossover. So they still have time. We can get a Senate bill number, so, uh, but it doesn't have one right now. And uh, uh, so we'll continue to uh, monitor that bill as well. Um, HB 1317 is um, as our uh, Maryland Medical Assistance Program, uh, use of reimbursement funds by schools. Um, this bill was supported with amendments uh, by May. Uh, it, it, it made it through first reading. It didn't get to second reading on the um, House side and it doesn't have a Senate number. And uh, so doesn't mean that it's dead, but it's it would be difficult to get it passed um, without a Senate bill and it's only on first reading right now. Um, HB 558, we oppose, we actually oppose this bill. Um, it, it, again, it's curriculum and edu you know, education, that, that's your purview. Um, sometimes it's not that the bill is bad, it's just that it's overly prescriptive and mandating to you what your job is. So, so um, this bill we opposed. Um, it passed the House. Um, there's no cross file, so we'll continue to monitor. It's the uh, HB 558 Primary and Secondary Education Comprehensive Health Education Framework. Um, we'll continue to monitor that one. Um, Senate Bill 1058 HB 1181 um, is, is again a curriculum bill. Education curriculum standards, uh, anti anti hate and Holocaust education. Not that the merits of these bills don't have merit, but again, those are things that, as a local board, you want to be able to. Um, that you know that that's kind of in your job description, um, as far as curriculum. Um, it, it passed on the Senate side, however, um, SB 1058, um, but it's only made it to first reading on the House side. So doesn't mean it's dead. But it, but it's very difficult if it's still on first reading, if if you know to make it on the house on the um, on the house side. Um, HB 1076 and SB 1091 is uh, a blind and visually impaired students textbooks equity program, where um, um, we want to provide the blind and visually impaired textbooks in in a timely way, um, so that you know there's equity. Um, in, in, in that in that in that area, um, this bill um, we support it with amendments, and it's on third reading, so it it is moving. It it is moving. When I say third reading, it's it's both house, both sides um, um, of the house. Um, school library materials, and I think everybody's been hearing about that. Um, this is the speaker of the house. Well, I'll speak of the house. Adrian Jones in the 10th district from Baltimore County. This was the speaker's bill. Um, and it actually gives MSD, MSDE to, uh, more oversight um, of, of the books that, that are being approved or disapproved. It, it creates a framework that MSDE will come up with. But however, in, in, in testimony, they wanted to make sure that within that framework, local jurisdictions had flexibility, which you should have that flexibility to look at you know, curriculum and books and things like that. So I think they found found, you know, um, with those amendments um, with this bill um, and and again, it's the speaker's bill um, is moving forward. So it's it's on third reading. Um, we'll continue to monitor that one. Um, special education, House Bill 903, Senate Bill 797. Um, this is a bill that was tweaked from last year um, um, to provide attorneys for families that are uh, you know seeking cases 
with the school systems around special education. So they were able, the bill didn't pass last year the way it was written. Everyone agreed that they needed to, you know, because it was such an important bill, needed to tweak it some more and make sure that, you know, they paid attention to some of the details in the, in the bill. Um, so that it was fair and equitable, equitable to both sides. And, and, I, and they've, I think this bill is, um, from the testimony that I listened to and everything, I think they found a good, good place for this where families can have advocacy too and representation as well. Um, and that's um, HB 903 Senate Bill 797. Again, this bill we supported um, with amendments and it is on third reading, so it, it, it's moving. It's definitely moving. Um, Senate Bill 1237, State Department of Education Task Force to study the Maryland online IEP system. Um, it's on third reading on the House side. However, there's no crossover bill yet. Um, we're still, this is the last day for that. Um, but I think we have up till midnight. And even with midnight, I think they, by courtesy, extended a day if some, some of the senators, delegates didn't get it in. So we'll continue to monitor this one too. But it did, um, on the House side, it made it through third reader. Um, the blueprint is on third reading. Uh, we supported that with amendments. Um, and we all know what the blueprint is. Um, so there's always bills that after a bill is passed that comes back and tweak it and, and, and improve it and make it better. So this bill, uh, we're supporting uh, uh, with amendments, the blueprint. And then um, community schools, House Bill 200, Senate Bill 160, um, was coming in making some alterations to community schools. And the House is on third reader. Uh, but on the Senate side, it, it's at first reading and it, and it was referred to the committee. So that that's going to be uh, not too sure about that one, uh, but we'll continue to, to monitor it. But it did pass the House on third reading and we support it with amendments. Um, House Bill 1287, uh, accountability bill, um, state and county superintendents of schools, employment contracts, school leadership courses, course of programs. It's on third reading. Um, on the House side, uh, but it doesn't have a crossover bill number yet. So we'll continue to monitor that as as well. And pre-K, um, House Bill 1441, early childhood education publicly funded pre-kindergarten programs alterations is on third reading um, in the House, but there's no, no Senate crossover bill yet. Um, so we'll monitor, continue to monitor that. Um, House Bill 1455, um, public pre-kindergarten and child care providers waiver action plan and assistant hubs. Um, we actually opposed that bill. Um, it's on first reading on the House side and it was referred to the committee. So doesn't have a Senate Senate bill number yet and it's on the first reading on the House. So I may not pass. House Bill 945, Senate Bill 771, is the teacher, uh, we talked about that too, the teacher certification programs, they're on third reading, and obviously we support that. Um, House Bill 1157, Senate Bill 937, Grow Your Own Educators grant program. Yes, obviously we report, uh, support that. Um, we'll continue to monitor that one as well. Um, another bill on, on a curriculum, um, the employee training and Holocaust education study has passed the House, but there's no Senate crossover file yet. And that's HB 1386. We'll continue to monitor that as well. Um, the um, coaches mental health training bill, again, you know, prescriptive and mandating. Uh, we oppose that, uh, may oppose that as well. It's on third reading on the House side, I don't think, and uh, I don't, it hasn't had a hearing yet. On, on the Senate, so we'll continue to monitor that one as as well. Um, not that it's a bad bill, but I think you know sometimes when they're overly prescriptive and in getting into what your work is, um, that you know that's the impetus to oppose those bills. Um, House Bill 1175, Senate Bill 1043, Public School Employers and Employees Subcontracting uh, for Services. Um, I don't think this bill, this doesn't have a Senate bill number. I mean, it has a Senate bill number, but it hasn't crossed over yet. And it's um, it's only made it to first reading in the House. So 
we oppose that bill so it doesn't look like it's moving. Um, now student health, uh, public and non-public schools, broccolata and epinephrine availability and use is uh, third, it's on third reading. Um, with that, that bill, um, overly prescriptive again, uh, we opposed it, Mabe opposed it, um, but it's on third reading. So I think that bill with amendments is moving forward. Um, House Bill 522, Senate Bill 492, uh, public school student telehealth appointments policy and access. Uh, supporting that with amendments, it's on the a third reading in the House and it's in um, on the Senate on first reading. So that's, but it's been referred to committee. So we got to see what comes out of that committee once they have their hearing. So we'll continue to monitor that. Looks like it's moving and we did support that with amendments. Uh, transportation. Um, the House Bill 196, Senate Bill 724, motor vehicles, school buses, seatbelts. It's on third reading in the House and it's on the uh, first reading over in the Senate. However, this bill was referred to committee as well. So we'll continue to monitor that one. Uh, the school bus monitoring cameras and safety measures. Uh, we oppose that bill. It's uh, first reading in the House referred to committee. I mean, it's in the first reading on the Senate side and it was referred to commit a uh, committee and on the house side um it made it made it through third reader and um i think there's two more madam chair um house bill 571 senate bill 485 family and medical leave insurance program modifications uh it's on third reading so that looks like it's moving forward um and finally um the uh, state operating budget uh senate bill 362 uh, the but this is you know the budget reconciliation and financing act the Burfa uh, Act of 2024. Of course, we support that, and um, the House passed it in its, in its own second reading in the Senate. Don't anticipate any problems with that. And I think that's it, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Lichter, Ms. Pumphrey. Any questions about those bills or where they stand? Um, just just the community school one. I can't remember what that one was that just to ensure the funding. Um, or was there something else about that one? I'll have to go back and. Look Let me see if I find that one. I think I had more, more to do with the um, with the with, with the funding and allocations for that. Okay. Um, Jane, yeah, if I remember correctly. It had nothing to do with the models that we use. It was just more about the funding. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'll, I'll put that on my list. That with the transparency bill, we'll we'll make sure we highlight those for you. Okay. go over the general assembly dates of interest. OK. And. Hold on. OK, here we go. Um, the general assembly dates of interest. We've we got three weeks to go and um, it's been a fast and furious uh, session. We've had over 300 bills. I keep telling everyone that's a, quite a bit. It might be 400 at this point. Um, we don't usually get that many. Um, but uh, we've done really well in um, being engaged and and uh, being staying on top of our bills. And I think our batting average is good too. With a lot of our bills working with Mabe and Pazam, who again I just want to say do an amazing job of representing locals um, and superintendents. Um, today's March 18th, which is the opposite chamber bill crossover date, as we discussed earlier, and uh, each chamber is to send to the other chamber those bills. It intends to pass favorably. Opposite chamber bills receive, received after this date are subject to referral to rules committee, which you don't, you know, no one wants to go to rules committee because it, you know, that's not a place you want to be. Um, doesn't make it impossible, but just very unlikely that your bill is going to come out before the session ends because we only got three weeks. Um, April first is the budget. It's the budget bill which we all will be looking at 
everybody um, because that's the one fiduciary responsibility that they have is to um, have a balanced budget, this, the General Assembly, and to fully fund education. Those are the two two mandates that the General Assembly have. Everything else is just like, okay, we just do that, but these two things we have to do. So um, April the 1st is, is the, uh, we'll all be looking at that when that budget bill comes out. And um, April the 8th is sign and die. And, <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> and, uh, and that's at midnight on April the 8th. And they, it's a real festive, it, it's like um, everybody exhale and you look back and you can't believe all the things that you did. And it's pretty exciting. And people are pretty, pretty happy and proud. Even if you didn't get everything you wanted, you get to see government really working um, as it should work. Um, and it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, I think that's it, Madam Chair. Thank you for that, Mr. Baysmore. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so that was our legislative update. So thank you, Mr. Baysmore, for putting that together. And then we want to take the, the the rest of this meeting to really uh, prepare for um, the next legislative session and to put some structures in place uh, for the committee. So all committees have been charged in Baltimore County Public Schools to uh, go back and revisit the purpose of the committee, um, the measures of effectiveness, and um, to develop an overall meeting calendar so that it's um, totally transparent with the public, what we're gonna go over each time we meet, and, um, and then how are we holding ourselves accountable for, um, for doing the work to help to move the school system forward. And so we're gonna take some time now to go and review the purpose of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee uh, to see if we need to make any modifications, we're going to look at the measures of effectiveness, make some modifications to that. And then um, beginning in July, we'll have, um, we're, we're, going to, we're going through the process of looking at who's going to be serve on the legislative committee and um, who will be the chair. And so by doing this in advance, it will allow us to, uh, to really work uh, in partnership with our, uh, with our elected officials for if there are any priorities that we want to see um, a bill developed for, uh, we can definitely do that. We would have enough time. We'll be proactively on that. So we don't, so this year we got our legislative priorities out while the legislative session was in process. Um, next year, we're looking at making sure that that process happens a lot earlier and that we are um, proactively um, on, the, on the other side, helping to, um, to, to shape bills that are going to help uh, Baltimore County Public Schools to, to move forward. So, um, so I would like to share my screen. So, Ms. Siebold, if I could uh, take over sharing, that would be great. For Mr. Corns. And what we're going to start with is just going through the purpose. And so what I'm going to display is the current purpose of our committee, and then we'll see if um, if the committee members that are here today, if they all agree, if we need to make some modifications, um, then we'll go into our measures of effectiveness. And, um, and this will all be used to inform our bigger work. Um, we're in the process of revising our board handbook. And so you'll see some modifications in our handbook. Ms. Booker Dwyer, you can just go ahead and, and choose display. Perfect. Okay, can you see my screen? So, yes, ma'am, it's invisible. Perfect. So right now, the purpose, this is getting a little too big, is displayed on the screen in the first box. And I just wanna take a moment, give uh, committee members time to review it. And then um, Ms. Pumphrey, Ms. Lichter, uh, I can't see. Um, so just come off of mute and um, and chime in with any edits. I would just say, and you already sort of mentioned this, this is Christina Pumphrey. I would just um, say that it says there meets monthly during General Assembly session, and you already mentioned that we want to start earlier. 
Um, I think that also lends itself to our priority this year as far as working with Baltimore County officials and as far as development and impact fees, things such as that. Um, and I think that sort of changes the time frame as far as our meetings, which you already mentioned, but I just wanted to say that again here. And so should this committee meet, um, so, so right now this committee is about, it's just that we typically meet for just a few months. So are we looking at now shifting to having this meet at least once a month or throughout the entire year like other committees? It sort of depends on I think what we're working on. I definitely think it needs to meet prior to a sem the um, session starting in order for us to um, sort of have our priorities in place before session starts. Um, as far as the entire year, I think if we're working directly with, if we're trying to work with county officials on very specific specific things, um, and of course development is what I'm thinking of at this point, then I think that would be necessary to work throughout the year. I'm not sure that that would always be necessary. Uh, so I'm not sure how we would phrase that. Maybe the what's as needed in there may be enough or as necessary, maybe enough to cover that. But, but what word, Smith? Uh, this part a little bit just to emphasize that it's monthly during the general assembly session and then um, there'll be some work prior to so we'll we'll emphasize that and that we can still keep meets as necessary. Miss Lichter any feedback? Um, no I was going to say kind of the same thing I don't think it needs to meet throughout the year but definitely more in the summer or something ahead of it's like so the, the legislative priorities need to be done way in advance there may be like a lull and then, you know, again, when we have, um, you know, when they're in session. But no, I think so. There's two. I see this as having two purposes, reviewing legislation and then also developing the priorities. Um, I'm trying to think, are there any other purposes? Besides for those, um, so not only to review legislation, we also determine when our advocacy is needed. So I don't know whether that's another purpose or that's just implied in the review. Um. Uh, we can emphasize that. So I will um, put that in there too as something that we can revise as well. Okay. So I will um, wordsmith this some more and um, bring this back before the committee afterwards missing the purpose. So then our measures of effectiveness. Right now there's two listed here that um, that number one, our legislative priorities that we develop are in alignment with the goals of the school system and that we um, engage in this advocacy in alignment with the priorities by providing testimony, written, re written responses, meeting with legislators, is, is there anything else that we need to do to demonstrate effectiveness? So um. there Okay, but the, oh yeah, go ahead, Miss Lichter. Or no, no, I can't think. I mean, there's one I'm thinking of, but it would apply for every committee, and that's just to make sure that we are all committed to um, participating in the meetings. Um, oh, yeah. I guess I got a scathing uh, email over the weekend about um, a different committee and the lack of participation on it. So, um, but that would be something that's more. Yes, and I think that's a larger issue because that I think is the bigger conversation about board committees and do we need all the committees that we have because if people aren't showing up, is that a sign that um, either the committee isn't needed or is there a shift in leadership that's needed? Um, and so I do think that's a, a larger discussion that we need to have. I think with all of our committees, we typically have pretty good, um, we typically have quorum. Um, right. And so we, you know, it could be unique to a, a certain committee, but I think this work that we're doing with looking at the bigger picture, clearly having the purpose, clearly having some measures of effectiveness, 
And then, um, and then it comes down to holding board members accountable for attending what they signed up to participate in to help move the work of the school system forward. And I mean, and maybe this is something um, that we could address in a future legislative session, but right now there is no accountability for board members. Um, you know, the idea of sanctioning a board member or the idea of um, going through the process to try to remove them um, has never worked well in Maryland. And so essentially a board member um, can behave how they want um, with no real repercussions, except when it comes time for election and whether or not they get uh, reelected. And so perhaps legislation is needed um, for, you know, to, to really hold board members accountable or, um, or maybe it's making the, the constituents aware of um, the participation because we have board members who don't show up to board meetings, who don't show up to committee meetings, who don't show up to work work sessions, um, and then we just have to question: Is that um, do the are the constituents aware, and is this the type of board member that they want representing them? So, um, so I think that is a bigger discussion, and maybe there needs to be stronger language uh, in a bill. Um, or, or or codified in state law to, to truly hold board members accountable because um, that really helps either to move the school system forward or to hinder its prog progress. So, um, so that's a, a great point, uh, Ms. Lichter. And I know that we're gonna build that into our board handbook to try to strengthen that. Um, but I do encourage uh, all, you know, if you vote for someone, see what meetings they're actually attending and how they're actually engaging with the board and um, on, on committees, um, because that is definitely, it impacts the work of the of the board. And I hesitated because part of that is, it's more generic for all committees or, so that's why I wasn't quite sure if it's needed for this one um, or, or not, but um, I think the other pieces are all there. Ms. Uh, Pumphrey, any anything else you can go to the next? No, I think it's all covered there. Okay, so then um, next steps with this piece is we will, um, what we will do is we will then make some revisions to this and I will bring this back to um, our commit next committee meeting uh, so that we can uh, see if we want to move this forward to the full board um, to, to go into our official board handbook. And then uh, we have uh, our board members that are, are here and what we'll do with the chair position, um, we, will, we will look at the chair in closed session and do that whole um, election and selection of committee chairs during closed session. So we will come back to that. And then at the next committee meeting, we will map out uh, the dates. We would look at the dates that will um, and times for our committee meetings. We will have more information because at our next board meeting, um, the, the session would have ended. We would have known which bills have went through and which ones did not. So that can help inform actions we take uh, moving forward in July. So what's listed on the screen here are just the, um, the topics that we've addressed thus far. Um, but what we'll do is we'll build out a whole calendar from July all the way to um, June of next year that where we can really just map out some of those uh, topics so that we are um, totally transparent with the public and they can anticipate uh, what it is we, we will be doing during those months. So I will stop sharing. And so at this time, there are no other topics. You timed that agenda to the T. I'm quite impressed, however, it's to the <laughs> minute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, trying to. So, um, all right. So then the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee meeting has been rescheduled from Thursday, April 18, 2024 to Monday, April 29, 2024 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? 
Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Vice Chair Pumphrey. Thank you. Bye-bye.